Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen Gortov, the Associate Director of Athletics for Communications here at Hofstra University. And I'm excited to welcome you to a very, very great day for our women's basketball program. Today, we introduced Danielle Santos Atkinson as our 12th women's basketball coach in the history of our program. And we couldn't be more excited to have her here today. I would also like to welcome those of you watching on Pride Productions and those of you listening on WRHU 88.7 FM. We'll have two speakers today, and at the conclusion, any media present who needs any interviews can see me or Rachel Vogel, and we'll be happy to assist. At this time, please join me in welcoming our Director of Athletics, Rick Paul Jr. Good morning, everyone. Everybody here okay? Yeah, we're good in the back. Brian, we're good. So welcome. What an exciting day as an organization. People get to celebrate who is. So we're excited to get started and introduce our 12th head coach. Somebody asked me the significance of April 15th. Some people are happy because of their tax, but not happy. Uh, we're pretty happy April 15th. Is happy. But first, I'd like to. Uh, Shares gratitude. I'd first like to acknowledge and thank Coach Krista Kilburn for all of her years of dedication, and certainly her um, ability to be hired today. So, Krista, we are and wish her uh, all the best. But also, I'd also like to thank Search for Never Easy, very certainly would like to thank members of the athletic department staff for the time and process. Was a shared effort. I'd like to especially thank uh, Stephen, Ryan, Chrissy, and Mike, and all those that worked hard today uh, to put this press conference together and all they did before it, and uh, all that Stephen will do after it. Um, I'd like to thank our women's basketball staff that is here in the crowd today for their continued effort and commitment to our current student athletes. I'd also like to recognize President Rabinowitz for his leadership and support during this, pro not only this process process and, the, uh, and his commitment to women's basketball, but to Hofst, all he does for our athletics program throughout the year. So President Rabinowitz, thank you very much. And a quick note of thanks to our um, Senior VP and General Counsel Dolores Fredrich for uh, her help in this process and all that she does for our program and student athletes uh, the year as well. So for those of you not familiar with uh, basketball searches at the Division I level, and quite frankly I've, I've experienced them at Division II level as well, it's a bit of lunacy. Um, you get about 962 phone calls, emails, texts about the next, because somebody coached CYO for two weeks that they are, should be our next candidate to be our basketball coach. Isn't always the case. Everybody's a basketball coach. I see Joe Mahalik in the back. Isn't that right, coach? You had about 4,000 of them, depending on the day, um, deciding what play, who should go in for whom, and who, who you're recruiting, and, and uh, the Monday morning quarterbacks. But the process was actually quite motivating. As tiring as it was, we were overwhelmed not only about the interest and enthusiasm for the position, but the incredible internal and external candidates that came forward that we would classify as potential great leaders of our organization. Incredible candidates. Of course, we won't share who they were, but we will tell you that it was, we were wowed. Certainly that did not, um, the wow did not stop and it certainly elevated um, as the name that was brought forward very quickly in this process is the ultimate candidate that we selected. But at every step of the way, we were certainly wowed. But before we get to the person we're here to uh, celebrate and introduce, I would like to uh, uh, introduce and acknowledge some of uh, the first family of women's basketball here. So we certainly know that her parents, uh, Pat and Anthony, if you could just wave, that would be great. Welcome. And we have her siblings, Mike, Erica, and Brenda, who seem to be very big fans. And I think there's some debate who the best athlete is in the family, but we'll figure that out afterward. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to like him a lot. I can tell this already. Her husband, Cleveland, who is a, a football player from UConn. We have two wide receivers in the audience, so if we're drafting for flag football, I'm picking the first two drafts. Cleveland, welcome to the family. Thank you for joining us. And I would like to really announce the most important thing is our, our first commit 
from the class of 2039 will be Miss London Atkinson. London is here. If you can wave to the crowd, London. This is now her new playground. Not a bad place to grow up. So now to the introduction of our next head basketball coach. Danielle Atkinson is originally from the Boston area and then realized she may have to root for the Red Sox, so quickly moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Danielle is no stranger to success in the basketball court. She starred at Wheeler High School in Georgia, where she's a current Hall of Fame member. She then went on to attend the University of Florida, participated in two NCAA tournaments, and still ranks in assists and three-pointers. She was an SEC academic honor roll four times. She's an Arthur Ashe Jr. scholar athlete. She began, as I mentioned earlier, her coaching career as an assistant at Hofstra University, helping the team to two WNIT appearances. She then moved on to Illinois State, where she had immediate impact, helping the team achieve 43 wins. After Illinois State, Danielle arrived on the University of Kentucky campus, which is okay with their basketball programs. She was a defensive coordinator, and her recruiting class was ranked fifth in the nation. The Kentucky teams participated in the NCAA tournament both years Danielle was on staff. Year one, they made the Sweet 16. Year two, they made the Elite Eight. After Kentucky, Danielle arrived on the campus of Florida State University as the recruiting coordinator. As the recruiting coordinator, she had two top five recruiting classes in the country, averaged 25 wins every season, and appeared in every year she was there, appeared in uh, the NCAA tournament, including two Elite Eights, one Sweet 16, and the second round appearance. She then was recruited to coordinate the, the recruiting efforts at the University of Pittsburgh and the ACC as well last year and hit the ground running. Often when asked the question, one asks, what are you looking for in your next head coach? It pretty much looks like this. But let's talk about the attributes um, that we want somebody committed to. We wanted somebody that was committed to the development of the whole person the whole student athlete, academically, socially, certainly athletically, but committed to an institution, a program, and a team that has integrity and character leading at, as, as its pillars. We were looking for someone who would live the mission at Hofstra, someone who put priority by their behaviors of student athlete welfare and support first. An unwavering, non-negotiable moral compass and a person who understands that there is a commitment to, to students, a team, and a program in a university. But let's, get, let's speak athletic talk. A fierce competitor. The boss likes that. The last one he's going to like the most, I think. An accomplished and one of the best recruiters in the business in America. And simply put, a winner by every measure. Danielle embodies all that we've looked for and more. Everyone that met her, to a one, raved about who she was and what she represented. People said she was, quote unquote, the whole package, or in our terms, the complete player. We, and when I say we, I mean I, tried finding something wrong. It kind of gets annoying in search processes when you ask people about people and they tell you all these wonderful and amazing things. And they did, ad nauseum. I said, tell me something wrong. Tell me what she's not good at. And to a one, people struggled. I didn't even get one. And I've told Danielle that I'm going to look very closely to find one the whole way. And she just kind of smiled like she does with this complete composure and didn't even flinch. Where we didn't fail in finding something was finding the right fit for our next head women's basketball coach. And we are thrilled to not only welcome Danielle, but the entire Atkinson family, the Santos and Atkinson family. Um, and I hope you will join me um, in welcoming our next head coach, Coach Danielle Atkinson.
Thank you, Rick, for that introduction. Um, I don't know if I've ever heard someone talk about me uh, and at length in that way. And so, of course, who wants to hear someone sit there and talk about them? But uh, I am thrilled to be here today. Uh, it means so much to me and to my career, for my career, to come full circle and to return to Hofstra University, to the place where it all started for me, as your head women's basketball coach. 13 years ago, I accepted my first coaching job here at Hofstra, a place I knew nothing about, a city I knew very little about, uh, and, I, and a campus that I hadn't even visited. I just accepted the job. Uh, and coming here, I trusted that the people I'd be working for and with would help me figure out how to put together my passion for the game, as well as my work ethic, to become a great coach. In my time, that happened. I began to realize in my four years as an assistant coach, I knew what work ethic was, I knew how to work hard, but I learned how to work smart. I knew how to relate to people, I knew how to build relationships, but I understood in being here in my four years that what matters most is how you impact people daily. I knew that I loved the game, but I, I again learned here how to hone my craft and begin to understand what it took to become a great coach at every level. I've been so fortunate on my coaching journey to work with and for great coaches, great mentors, and I've worked with great players that have all prepared me for this time and for this team. To this team, I appreciate you guys coming today. I appreciate you guys accepting me as your new coach. I know change is hard, as we talked about, but on the other side of change is growth, opportunity, and new perspective. I look forward to building lifelong relationships with you guys as we start this journey that lasts forever as we work together to build a championship program. The Hofstra Women's Basketball Program will build its foundation on four principles, honesty, hard work, discipline, and enthusiasm. We will give a honest effort in every single thing we do. We will have honest communication, and we will display honest actions. We will be disciplined in our studies. We will be disciplined in our training and in our play. We will work hard on the court and in the classroom. We'll work hard to develop and grow our character and we will work hard to be great people and citizens of this community. It's an honor to stand here before you today as a head women's basketball coach as a, at a place where academics and athletics work hand in hand. You're surrounded by greatness here. There's a tradition of excellence that permeates this university. The commitment of every staff member and faculty here is so very evident. The people that I will get to work with every single day share the same values that I share, and that was very important to me in coming to Hofstra. The greatness both in and out of the classroom is truly a blessing. I'd like to thank President Rabinowitz, Rick Cole, Cindy, Rachel, and the entire athletic administration here and campus administration that has belief and trust in me to lead the women's basketball program. I also wanna thank my husband, Cleveland, and our daughter, London, who's been supportive of me since the day we met uh, and my career as a coach in this profession. It's not hard, it's not easy being, being the husband or wife of a coach, and he gets that, and I appreciate that about him. My parents, Pat and Anthony, that have instilled the core values in me that have allowed me to stand here before you today. My siblings, Brenda, Mike, and Erica, Marilyn, every single day, they challenge me, but every single day they are in my corner giving me the confidence to take on anything that comes my way. I'd also like to thank my former Boston friend, Lance White. He has been amazing throughout this process. Uh, you hate losing coaches. I've been a part of staffs that have lost coaches, but from day one he has always told me, you are a head coach, you deserve to be a head coach, and anything I can do to help you, I will push you in that way. To the administration at Pitt, I appreciate their trust in me as to be a part of their program, as well as a sincere thank you to every administration, coach, program that I've been a part of that helped develop and grow me to the coach I am today. 13 years ago, I walked onto this campus eager to grow. 
a willingness to work hard, to develop, to be a great coach. And today I return with those same traits, with an understanding that the greatness to our, the, the keys to the greatness of our success will be the relationships we build, the culture we develop, and the consistent work ethic daily to build a championship program. I thank you so very much for this opportunity, and I look forward to returning to Long Island with my family and rejoining the Hofstra community. Thank you. I'd like to welcome President Stuart Rabinowitz up for a quick photo op. Thank you all so much for coming. We welcome you all to have some food and drink over there while you're still here. And please join me once again in welcoming back Danielle Santos Atkinson as our new head women's basketball coach. Thank you all so much. Good morning. Still good morning. So I just really want to jump into it. You talked about the process, finding the right coach, and you talked about finding someone that's going to develop these student athletes wholly, not just as sure. athletes. What really stood out about Daniel Santos Atkinson in that regard? I think. Well, I think you you guys will get you will get that feeling as soon as you you sit with her. But you know, the time that we spent with Danielle, not only when we uh, visited with her at the Final Four, but when we visited with her on campus, is you know. To the quality of the human being, you know, she, beyond the fact that she's articulate and she's an excellent, effective communicator and she's a great listener, um, you know, she knows the game, she knows how to recruit, her work ethic, she constantly, not only does she, the candidate, she, the basketball co coach, speak to the pillars and principles that she lives her life by, everybody we talked about says she's a behavior first person, she is engaging. Um, the intent and welfare of student athletes is her priority. She's a special teacher, a special recruiter, all those things. Um, so, I mean, it was just witnessed by her and witnessed by everybody. And when she was on campus, you know, everybody felt the same thing right away. Now, I was excited just by listening from her speech. That got me very excited. I've not even talked to her yet. Uh, how important, though, I guess she's had a lot of accolades. She's played very well. She coached very well. How important is it to have someone that I know was a while ago was a part of this program and got her start here? Well, she knows Hofstra, mm -hmm. right? She had three to four, almost four years here. And, you know, not only does she know Hofstra, she knows how to win at the highest level. Mm -hmm. You know, she's recruited the elite athletes with um, multiple top five classes um, over the last five years in the country. And, and we expect her to raise the bar by every every measure. But, you know, she's, she's committed. She says, listen, we're going to win academically first. We're going to win uh, culturally, academically. Those are the priorities. Good, You know, if competitors want to compete, they're going to rise to those challenges mm -hmm. on the court north the court and um, you know she's really invested in making um, you know building and strengthening relationships with the student athletes and making sure that they understand that there's a high expectation for everybody but she's in it she's in it for the long haul you know it's not always going to be easy it's not always going to be perfect but she's committed to doing what is right and doing what's for our student athletes we could sit here all day and talk <laughs> about her accolades sure. as an assistant coach but how encouraging was it to you knowing that she was able to see so much success as a player as well I mean I mean from what I hear from staff, even during staff games back when she was here, she's like, you got to bring your A game because she's going she's gonna to kill you. you know, she's just better than everybody here. Um, you know, she was a talented player in the SEC. She was a talented player um, and I mean, Hall of Famer in high school, great collegiate high-end Division One player, you know, has, has, has coach at the mid-major, coach at the Power Five, you know, but that stuff doesn't define her. She's a humble, 
all-in person that's just really about making a difference. I mean, she's just so natural and so approachable. Mm -hmm. So um, she can play, she can coach, she can recruit, you can tell she can talk. I mean, mm -hmm. she just got introduced for the first time as a head coach in her career, and she's got balance and composure. You know, she just, um, that's what we expect from her. Um, you know, when you if you just talk about winning, you don't win. You know, when you just have the behaviors that she has, winning is the outcome. And, um, you know, we're excited to see where she's going to build the program. Uh, where do you see this program going with her at the helm? You know, I don't think there's any limits. You know, I think that she can make us um, – and, and look, not instantaneously. We joke about we expect to be in the NCAA tournament <laughs> next year. We know that there's a process. And culture and process is the focus. Um, I expect us to have new heights, new achievements, new accolades. But, uh, you know, I think that the greatest thing I expect us to be is to have a culture that people want to emulate and, and respect um, and be more magnetic and start to really bring people to be, um, have a magnetic approach to our women's basketball program. That wouldn't be the first time she's been a part of this program specifically that had a really big culture change. You look back, the difference between the 2007-2008 season and the 2008-2009 season, the team went from 5-25 and 25 and to 16-14. 16 and 14. It was the third best improvement in the nation sure. at that time. Is that something that kind of came into effect, like knowing that she was a part of something that went through that culture change and went yeah, through an ultimate and, change? Yeah, and, you know, she, does, she did it there. She, you know, she did it at Illinois State. Mm -hmm. she, was a help, she was a difference maker at... Kentucky, she was the difference maker at Florida State. Mm -hmm. You know, she is revered in, in, in the, in the um, as a recruiter in the country. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you're a parent, and I've had three kids go through this collegiate process, and she sits down at my table to recruit my kid, I'm like, where do we sign? You know, she's about developing the whole person, you know. And you know they're going to get better in basketball, but you know they're going to get better. They're going to. She's the type of person that makes each individual and collective group realize their greatness. And that's what, you know, another big um, key to her special, perfect fit for us right now. She's a very young coach. She only sure. recently played yeah. in the NCAA herself. Was it encouraging for you knowing that there wouldn't be too much of a disconnect between her and the players? Well, you know what? She's, she, I think, she appears a little younger than you think. I mean, 13 years right. as an yeah. assistant coach is a pretty long time. It is. You know, but her energy and her ability to connect with people, mm -hmm. including her players, is the difference maker. Gotcha. Just your thoughts on the new head coach. Um, we're very excited about her. The whole team is can't wait to start practicing. She's been talking to us like for a couple of days now. And yeah, we're very excited. So I kind of talked about this with Rick Cole Jr. I'm going to talk with uh, Coach uh, Santos Atkinson as well. She's seen a lot of success as an assistant coach in her time, but she also saw success as a player in college. Is that encouraging to you, knowing that she saw success both as a player and a coach? Yeah, obviously. Somebody that has played basketball for a long time, too, it helps because she has different like perspective when it comes to coaching. And I think that that will help us. Yeah. How about her age? She's a very young coach. Is it going to be nice to have someone that is kind of relatable in, in a sense? Yeah, of course. She's going to understand us better. I feel like she knows, like she's been in big programs. So I guess she'll, she's going to make us be better. That's for sure. And also she'll, she's going to understand like what we go through in school, what we have to do in basketball. So I feel that's a very good point too. Now having her as a leader, what are you excited for in coming up in your senior season? Well, I'm very excited. I think we can win championships here. And I think having her as a coach and whoever comes and whoever stays, I think it's going to be great. And it's like we can't wait to get to work and get better and, yep, get to win a championship. She had a lot of success making it to the Elite Eight and the NCAA tournament. The NIT had a lot of success in the playoff runs. What kind of confidence does that give you? I mean, obviously, we know she's a great coach. She's been part of great teams, great conferences. So I guess she's bringing really good things with her, new perspectives that we didn't have before, and I think it's going to be great, yeah. You're going to be a senior leader on this team. Has she talked to you about the role she expects you to play this upcoming season? Not really. She just came here. It's been like right. crazy days, two <laughs> crazy two days, and she says she's going to meet with all of us individually to talk about things and get to know us. She said the first thing is to get to know us. Uh, we need to ne get to know her, too, because we don't know her at all, so mm -hmm. that's going to be a big part, too. too. What are you most excited about change-wise, just going from Coach Kilburn Stavesky to Coach Santos Atkinson? Well, the first thing are, like, practices, how they're going to go. I think we're going to be working very hard. Like I said, she comes from big programs. She knows what it gets to, like, win. She knows what it has to be done to be great. So I can't wait to see her thoughts about it. Us as well, and Anna, just thank you for coming on. 
Thank Anna, you, thank guys. Thank you so much for coming on and thank you. a few questions with us. Hi, head coach Daniel Santos Atkinson for the first time on the airwaves. Uh, coach, how are you? I am incredible. <laughs> uh, so, and uh, just an amazing feeling to be back here. So many familiar faces. Uh, it's, it's great to be back. So I just, I don't know how better to start this off. You have an incredible resume, not only as an assistant coach, but as a player as well. What are you most excited to bring from that, all that successful experience to this program, which has struggled within the recent years? Uh, I, you know what? I've been able to pull a little bit of something from every single stop that I've been at. And that's what's been incredible in my coaching career is that I've learned different leadership styles, uh, different ways to play offense, different ways to play defense, different special situations. Uh, but I'm most excited to be able to come back and just bring my passion and energy and my work ethic uh, to this program to uh, show the girls that we're going to work hard and we're going to get after it, but we're going to enjoy the process. We're going to enjoy doing it. Uh, and we're going to have an enthusiasm about what we do. So we talked about this a lot before the press conference. We talked about it with Rick Cole Jr. Something that I want to know from you. You come back to Hofstra now. You, you started your tour here uh, 13 years ago. Now you're back. What are you most excited about? Because I know things have changed. You now have a family. You have a two-year-old daughter. What are you looking forward to about being at Hofstra? Yeah. Uh, again, like I said, there's so many familiar faces. I love the people and the support of this athletic administration and university. Every single person around here wants to see women's basketball be successful, uh, whether it's administration, coaches, uh, the other teams. Everybody wants women ba women's basketball to be successful. Uh, that's really important in wherever it is that you are as a head coach to have that support, to have that belief and that trust uh, that, that you can do it and that this program can be successful and this program can win. Uh, there's a tradition of excellence mm -hmm. in this university. Uh, uh, other sports are doing such a great job. Uh, you're surrounded by winners, uh, as I said, and just to be able to learn from that and be back here in Long Island is just incredible. Now let's talk about your playing days a little bit. Of several years at the University of Florida and NCAA appearance in the second round, a WNIT appearance, and then another NCAA appearance as well. What did you pull most from your time at Florida under uh, head coach Carolyn Peck? Yeah, Carolyn Peck pushed us and challenged us every single day, uh, and that's one thing that I will always remember. But it was so easy to work hard for her because she knew she, we knew she loved us and cared about us. And that was one of the biggest things that, that I've taken from that that I'd like to bring to this program and the programs that I've been a part of. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Uh, and if you show that you care and that it's truly a genuine relationship that's built out of trust, there's a foundation there, uh, you're able to push them and they will work really, really hard. Uh, you want to see them be successful, you got to help motivate them and, to and them to believe that it's something that they can do. And all of that works hand in hand with the relationship that's built. So your final season as a player was 2005, 2006. Not so long ago, so how can you relate to the players and the team, in whether it's practice, at the games, or just helping them out in the classroom or anything, trying to get them to become the best student athletes that they can be? Yeah, I understand what they're going through every single day. I understand what, it, as a Division One athlete, what that feels like every single morning, uh, what that feels like in practice every single day. I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. I understand when you're tired. I understand when you're sore. I understand when you have three tests in one week. I know what that's like. Uh, and so I have an empathy to that, but I also know what it's like to push through that, to get through that, and to still be able to be successful at what you're doing. Uh, and, I, and, and that way I can relate to them, but in that way I can also learn, I can also help them learn mm -hmm. and teach them that in the moment, it feel, you feel overwhelmed. In the moment, you feel you can't do it. In the moment, you're stressed out. But again, with growth on the other side of that, with that uncomfortableness, uh, there's great opportunity. Now, Coach, you have obviously spent a tremendous amount of time at top programs, Kentucky, Illinois State, Florida State, where you had tremendous success. What was special about Hofstra and unique about Hofstra that really compelled you to come back? Um, again, I can't keep saying it, but the people here, um, the people here, it, it doesn't matter where you are. You can be at one of the top programs in the country. If you don't have the support, uh, if you don't have people around you that truly believe that you can be successful, that the program can win, uh, it makes it tough. Personally, for me, I, I love the city. I love the, the mix of being 30 minutes from Manhattan, 30 mm -hmm. minutes from the beach. Uh, I have family up this way. My brother lives in Montclair, New Jersey, and my parents are in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, so personally, for me, I mean, it's a win-win. You love who you're doing your job with. You love where you're doing it. Uh, and then you enjoy doing it in the process.
Yeah. Now, Coach, I want to talk about this. This is definitely going to be a bit of a culture change for this team. Definitely an underwhelming season last year. But you, this would definitely not be the first time for you being a part of a team that's going through a culture change. Going back to your time, your last stint with Hofstra, the 2007-2008 season, only a five-win season for the program. But the very next season, a 16-win season, was the third best improvement in the entire nation for any women's basketball program. Do you remember anything about that season and that something that you can bring over that you learned from that season specifically to this season? Yeah, in seasons like that, you want to find the wins at, in the year. And so we didn't have a lot of wins in the win-loss column, but we definitely had a, win, a lot of wins throughout the year as we learned to grow and develop as a very young team. We had a lot of seniors graduate. Uh, and so in that year, we had to find wins in other ways, whether that was wins in the classroom, whether that was wins in practice every day, whether that was a win in a drill that we hadn't been able to get in a few practices that then we were we able to accomplish. Um, those were the wins that you had in that year. So for us, we are going to appreciate this journey. Um, we're going to look for wins every step of the way. Uh, and in that process, the win-loss column will take care of itself. Gabe talked about it a little before. You have a daughter, London. How excited are you to have her grow <laughs> up in the Hofstra community? Yeah, so excited. Um, she is just a ball of energy. <laughs> um, she loves people, and she loves change and new things. Uh, and so to have her be able to be a part of this team with such great role models uh, that she can grow up and be a part of is really special to me. Now, Coach, we do this with everyone's first interview with us. We're going to th uh, throw a little rapid fire at you. So okay. just say the first things that come to your mind. Uh, we're just going to start with this one. So you said you really didn't know much about the city before you took your first job here. Now a few times passed. What's your favorite thing about the city? Uh, the beach and city combination. <laughs> All right. Favorite sport besides basketball? Track and field. Favorite movie? Ooh. Six cents. Go to meal. Lasagna. Least favorite meal. Brussels sprouts. <laughs> favorite band or artist? Oh. Beyonce. Favorite professional sports team? Patriots. I share a birthday with Beyonce, so oh, yeah. That's so special. I feel, you're gonna talk yeah. about your Patriots fan <laughs> or your Eagles fan. <laughs> favorite professional athlete. Don't say Tom Brady. <laughs> Serena Williams. All, All right, right I agree with that. Answer. Uh, favorite hobby? Traveling. Favorite part about Hofstra's campus? The green space mm. on the academic side of campus. Love that. Biggest role model? My parents. And then finally, what you're looking forward to most, not only about being the head coach of this program, but just about being a part of the Hofstra family. Getting to know everyone that I don't know here um, and reconnecting with the people that I do. Coach Santos Atkinson, thank you so much for your time. We really thank appreciate you. it. We can't wait to see what you're yes. able to do with this program. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was...